Your parents fucked you up. You're damaged goods. But you can still do it. You hurt him. Jesus Christ. Now you're going to say, oh, well, he's a medical doctor. He's like a pentaho over here. I mean, they got a and she's a girl, and she's pretty, and she's this, and she's that, and she's got tits, and I don't. You got all these reasons. Guys, I'm telling you. You know, flatline means, sweetheart, you're flatlined. That's just the way it is. But you can be flatlined and still get it done. He still thinks raising capital, he doesn't even know what that means, really. The truth of the matter is, some of you don't know what it means. But the bottom line is, you don't have to know what it means. I can't tell you tomorrow was going to be live, and he's going to tell you it doesn't matter. That as Christ is my witness, as Allah is my witness, if I can get you to believe that before you leave here, the first time you get up to bat, you're knocked right out of the motherfucking park. But as good as I am, I can't get you to believe that. Pedro understands intellectually what I'm saying. Why is it so hard to believe a monkey with a 50 motherfucking IQ? Why? Either you're not fucking serious, you wasted 25 grand, you've already got two or three people in here that have gone out and done this shit, but you still don't believe. Why? Forget me, because I am a superstar genius. No question about that. And you're not me. You're not the sweat on the inside of my balls. Nobody washing this fucking thing just sweat on the inside of my balls. But there are morons in this room that have done it. Maybe your sweat is the same as their balls. I don't know. Your colleagues. You're the same. It is fucking I, my 11 year old daughter got like easy peasy. Your parents fuck you up. You're damaged goods. But you can still do it. You hurt him. Jesus Christ. Now you're gonna say, oh well, he's a medical doctor. He's like a pentaho over here. I mean, they got a and she's a girl and she's pretty and she's this and she's that and she's got tits and I don't. You got all these reasons. Guys, I'm telling you. Short of going into a bank with a gun and a mask, this is the only game in town. And it's been around for over 100 years. Remember, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Absence of evidence, just because you've never seen it done. In some places, you might not think it's possible. A lot of people tell me Israel is hard. Well, I mean, look at this brain dead over here. I mean, Jesus Christ, what, he doesn't look like Moses to me. Well, maybe he does look a little like Moses. I'll take that back. <laughs> But it's not, it's just, but like he said, he's a press the flesh guy. He's a guy that did it eyeball to eyeball. But he didn't bring up, he went out and got an office. Separate from his surgical, what do you call it? His practice. You know, these places you can rent offices, you know, that have reception and that kind of shit. Regus, I think is one. That's what he did. That's what he did. And he used the club he couldn't afford, as he pointed out. And that's where he does his, not entertaining, but his, in addition to his office. And his office is right near his club. And uh, he's, he's doing well. Funny enough, I know a lot of them, mothers don't think it's so funny. While he's uh, wife's in labor, he's saying push, push, and he's try, trying to close the deal on the phone. Push, push, and he's trying to close the deal on the phone. Doesn't sound too romantic, does it? But you got to get the deal done. And there's a time when the cow's got to come home to milk, as they say. And that deal was going to get closed within that day. It just so happens his wife gave birth that day. So he was there, and he got the deal done. What are the takeaways about Joe? Other than he's not Lord Olivier. Yeah, Walter. <laughs> now he's got, well, now he's got pretty good communication skills. He's not stuttering, but he knew his communication skills were poor. Now, to be a surgeon, you don't have to have great communication skills. <laughs> Scalpel, that, that, you know. <laughs> he's got passable communication skills now. And I mean, he loves the idea. There's no question about it. He got tired of slicing on people. And at some point in time, your surgical career ends. You can't do it forever. Oh, he's a young guy. Yeah. <laughs> Bankers stole him as long as cash flow covers debt service. And they were selling him. Amen. And he emailed me, and, his week, and it just so happens his weekly report would coincide with that. And remember how I tell you how it's deja vu? You know, that means you've, you've been there before. He put it in big on it. It was like deja vu when that banker, I think it was Wells Fargo, that said, cash flow covers debt service. And then they said, you talk in our language. <laughs> now, that must be either a brain dead banker because when uh, if they think he's talking financial language, I mean, that's a stretch. That's a bridge too far. But there's only one of the kids that's up there, this is a number of years ago, said there's only about 25 or 30 phrases you gotta know. 25 or 30. The nomenclature of QLA, more or less. You have that in your gigs, okay? I'm not sure that's even 25 or 30. You know, there's maybe five or 10. It's like, I didn't know anything about the oil and gas business when I started, and now, you know, I'm more or less an expert. 
but I mean, it's taken me 25 years and there's probably 25,000 phrases I know now. But when I started, I didn't know anything. I just try to sound like a good old boy. And that was good enough back in those days, you know, trying to sound like an illiterate redneck. Walter? I was gonna say, well, he definitely took action. He drove by three different version care units and then instead of going to the destination, he drove right back home. Correct, home. correct, correct. And well, as a surgeon, he understands if you don't clamp off the radio call right away, then somebody dies. So he understands that part. He understood about taking action, but he also admitted uh, he's naive. And there's, there's good things about being naive and there's bad things about being naive. But uh, one of the individuals told him that, uh, remember, I believe it was the CFO said, we want to have a perfect deal for the first deal. You're going to hear that. No, not, but you're going to hear it because that's what they're going to tell you. And there is no perfect deal. There's uh, The perfect deal is the first deal. You know, you will love the one you're with. I mean, uh, yeah, Walter. Don't say from non-threatened eyeball industry. Well, I mean, he's a, he's, he's, a, he's a vascular surgeon. All he had to decide on is where in within the medical field. Because he talked about a lot of things. I mean, not here, he didn't. He talked about a lot of things, and then he decided, and um, and he's been he's been moving forward since. Uh, um, Doc here has decided, I think, at least temporarily, she's decided on what she's going to do. Um, yeah. His lawyer had regret about missing a previous startup joining that years ago. Yeah. And that's what drove him to say, hey, I want to be, be part of your Correct. startup. And you're going to find people that did that turned down startups. There's a thing called public storage that was a Anderson deal, Arthur Anderson years ago. And all the big, not all, four or five of the big eight at that time turned down public storage. And uh, Arthur Anderson, which is now gone, picked it up and they and all the other people that have turned it down have uh, buyer's remorse for turning it down. And then you'll find people that have been part of successful startups, and those guys aren't too hard to sell. So the people that have turned them down aren't too hard to sell, and the people that have actually ridden the train aren't too hard to sell, but it's the people in the middle. And again, you're gonna be part of a risk-reward portfolio across the board. The big firm, PwC, is uh, saying, I don't know if this is the right number, 100 million to spend on business development, and how much has already been spent on healthcare, and they'll all have it computerized. It's all in the cloud there someplace. And they'll say, oh, we still got seven, eight million dollars for this, this quarter to spend on healthcare. And the first one to ask, like he said, I am his chairman. And somebody the next day, one of you asked me to do the exact same thing in the same hotel, at the same table at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, one day late. But I had already said yes to him. And so I said uh, no to the other guy. And some of the people that you'll talk to, as he pointed out, aptly pointed out, will have a conflict. That's why when you find somebody that is really fits the bill, so to speak, you get after them. So they, so you're first, and not second or third. I mean, he's, he's very candid. He didn't, he didn't pull any punches, except he didn't talk about how he couldn't talk at the beginning. He left that out. In the fog of war, he left that out. He, he stuttered. But I mean, he's he's typical for an educated guy. But he went to the trade associations and all those things. And in his particular case, he went to alumni association because he went to two great schools, both undergraduate and medical school. And um, the, for those of you that did go to school, it doesn't matter. But if you don't didn't, didn't go to school, he's going to trade shows. He's actually acting like a salesman. He's going to trade shows. I forget what trade show that was. And he set up a booth just like a huckster, a pencil salesman, fucking MD doctor, surgeon. You know, and he had your flyers. Hey! Now, you know, a lot of people won't do that because it's beneath them. Being a salesman is beneath a lot of people. Most people, really. I'm one of the few that prides himself as a salesman that's taking my sales skills up to the very level, to governments, prime ministers. Anything else about Doc Joe? Or the numbers? He said he wanted to get all the numbers at the negotiation tool? Well, yeah. What he was meant to say, trying to say, due diligence not your price down. Okay. He doesn't call it the right shit. I mean, it doesn't matter what you I'm telling you. While you're trying to say the perfect thing, I mean, I just say, just uh, pull the trigger, Joe. Just pull the trigger. And he has. And he has. His wife doesn't like the story. We had dinner not too long ago about how he's on the phone and she's in labor. You know, I think it adds, I mean, some realism to it. I mean, the wives look at it, uh, some wives look at it differently. You know, that uh, what kind of caring significant other is there when he's on the phone. No, oh, that's too much money. Push here, push here. That's too much money. We're not doing that. Anything else about Joe? Yes, sir. Wait. Ambition and enthusiasm are your biggest leverages. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah, the CEO left for a big job. And uh, on paper, his first dream team looked like they could run health insurance. I mean, they were just super guys. But it always takes longer to do the deals. 
And even though they say, well, we can work for no uh, salary, but nobody's going to work for no salary for too long. And then somebody offered him a big job up in Seattle, Washington, for the big hospital. They head up a big hospital group for a lot of money. And uh, so he left. And they give you the equity back, and then they leave. And they leave. But, uh, yeah, but that, that's not the only person. I think we've lost at least one CFO that I can recall. And in the beginning, we had a CEO, and now we don't have a CEO because Joe's the CEO. Joe's the CEO. And in the beginning, until you have a bunch of practices, what you guys are doing, or similar to what you're doing, you don't need a big high-powered CEO. It's nice if he can stick around for 18 months until you have enough cash flow to pay him, but it's not likely he's going to stick around for, or she's going to stick around for 18 months. What do you think he could make on his exit? Well, he wants to exit. I'll tell you, it's in the public domain. He's exiting on his 50th birthday. On February, is it February? 2000 and what are we, 18 now? 2022, he wants to exit on his birthday. I had an exit on my birthday. He's 40, is that making 47 now? And uh, we plan on having 50, 50 centers, 50, 50, actually 50 to 70. Whether it's an IPO or a industry giant, I told him, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. Whoever's gonna pay us most. But I mean, for a doctor, and again, he, you know, he didn't come into this deal poor, so don't feel sorry for him. But uh, he could be a doctor for the next 400 years and not make the kind of money he's gonna make on the exit. You understand that, don't you? <laughs> but the audience, don't pan down, but we have a, a medical doctor sitting here on the right, so I'm, I'm teasing her a little. Um, yeah. But we have the ones with no education. And like he said, overeducated makes it harder. I keep saying that, but you know, and I'm not overeducated, but when somebody overeducated, not, I don't mean that in a derogatory manner, but he has a lot of education, degrees, etc. It is because you learn to do things in a certain fact pattern. And as Deb said, who's also overeducated, if you want to use that term, defaults a bitch. Defaults a bitch. Now you're, you're going to he never listen, hear the word default again. You're going to think of it differently than you ever did before. You know, default on your laptop uh, is, is different than uh, your default going back to which the norm is. And again, when he said, you come from the castle, you go back to your shitty house, your shitty this, you know, and he, he doesn't live in those, I mean, he doesn't live like that. I, he is upper echelon, but compared to this, and then the real thing is, I mean, going back to the environment, vis-a-vis -vis the people that are in the environment, uh, they, that can bring you down. And that's why you've got to stay energized and keep pushing forward and, um, and get it done as, as he has. Any other questions about Joe? Yeah. In terms of motivated sellers, he was saying one of the centers wouldn't open their books. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, an Asian. It was an Asian, and I'm not disparaging Asians, but it was an Asian doctor. But then he got sick. Remember I said you put him on the, on the side and then you keep rolling, got a bunch in the funnel, and then four or five months later, his wife called <laughs> Dr. Joe, and he says, you know, like he says, I don't think my husband can uh, practice any longer. And when I went to the, the first center that uh, we bought, they were all Hispanic. And uh, you would have thought that uh, I was the uh, Latino Moses. All the wrong reasons, and I tell you, minorities pick for a lot of the wrong reasons. Just because my name's Pena ain't a fucking reason to be all happy. Since then, they know that I'm fucking a tiller the hunt. But on first blush, oh, he's a Hispanic. But um, so I went to the first one, and it was uh, interesting to, to see my Hispanic brothers. 95% of the patients are Hispanic, 95. I'm sure some of your relatives Pedro, I mean, but we're not buying businesses based on ethnicity. Some of you will try, they have in the past. You know, I tease some of the, the brothers that, believe me, they don't care that you got the same, but they're not gonna give you any deals. I mean, uh, blood's thicker than water, money's thicker than both. Okay, YouTube, thank you.